For section 1.4, we are concentrating on linear functions and slope. These are concepts that you've probably had since like an Algebra 1 class. Uh, please make sure though that you don't get complacent in this section and that you make sure that you understand all, all of the concepts. It's mainly review material, but we wanna make sure that you get the concepts, uh, especially when we talk about the point slope formula and stuff, uh, that's never going away. It's uh, quite necessary in calculus classes. Uh, now, first of all, as far as the objectives in this section, we will be calculating a line slope, pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we'll take that and use that to write the point slope form of an equation of a line. And then we'll, we will write and graph the slope intercept form of the equation of the line. Uh, that's probably more helpful in actually graphing it out. And then you'll notice we will graph horizontal and vertical lines. Uh, recognize and use the general form of a line's equation. Uh, that's when we have a zero on one side and all the variables and constants on the other. Uh, and then use intercepts to graph the general form of a line's equation. And then lastly, model data with linear functions and make predictions. Okay, so first up here. The definition of slope, uh, you've probably talked about it. Oh, slope is just the change in y over the change in x, or it's the rise over the run. All of those are correct formulas. If you have some, an ordered pair x1, y1, and a second ordered, ordered pair x2, y2, then the slope is just the ratio of the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. And so you could say, well, that's easily defined by the change in the y values, which would be the second y value minus the first y value, you see that in the numerator, y2 minus y1, over the denominator, which is the distance the horizontal changes. And so you say, well, that's going to be the right hand x value, x2 minus the left, x1, x2 minus x1. Now, of course, this ratio is only valid if x2 and x1 are not the same number. We say x2 minus x1 cannot equal zero. If it does equal zero, then that just means that your slope is undefined. And anytime you have the same X values, but multiple Y values, you know that that's gonna be a vertical line. It's not a function. I would have an undefined slope. Uh, now, up next, let's look at an example of this. So here, I do give you different X values for the same two points. So there will be a slope that's defined. I give you the ordered pair four negative two and the ordered pair negative one five. So now my slope formula tells me to take y2 minus y1, five minus a negative two over x2 minus x1, which is gonna be negative one minus a four. Well, five minus a negative two, we know five minus a negative two is the same thing as five plus two. I get a seven in the numerator. And then my denominator, negative one minus four gives me negative five. Personally, I don't like the negative in the denominator. You can leave it like that. Uh, I would either move the negative out front or even in the numerator with a seven, uh, either way there. Uh, so now negative seven fifths, final answer. Now let's say we wanted uh, to find the equation of a line. In order to get that equation of a line, this formula is so beneficial. It's called the point slope formula. Why? Well, because if you know a slope and you know a point, so notice our slope we call M, and our point we're gonna call x1, y1, then the equation of the line with that given point and slope has to be y minus the y1 value from your coordinate is equal to m times x minus the x1 value from your coordinate. Let's see that in action. Okay, so let's say I'm trying to write the equation in point slope form of a line with a slope of six that's gonna pass through the ordered pair two negative five. Again, remember that's your x1, y1. Okay, no problem. Point slope formula, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. That becomes y minus a negative five. That's gonna become y plus five in the next step. And that's going to equal the slope six times x minus x1. Well, that's x minus two. So then I'll get y plus five is equal to six times the group x plus two. Now, I stopped at that point right here and just simplified this and I did not distribute the six. Anytime you see uh, 
y minus y1, in this case y plus 5, is equal to m times x minus x1. As soon as you see that, that is the point slope form of the equation. On your homework and on my math lab, it's going to ask for the point slope form and the slope intercept form. For the point slope form, it's wanting you to stop here and select this as your answer. Now, a more useful answer is an answer in slope intercept form. All that means is solve for y and simplify. Okay, that's what I did right here. I take this equation in point slope form and I'll distribute the six on the right hand side. Then I'll subtract five on both sides. Negative 12 minus five gives me negative 17. My slope intercept equation is the equation solved for y. And in this case, that's gonna be y equals six x minus 17. Now from this, I can easily see, well, the slope is just the coefficient of x, it's six. And the y intercept, the b, is my negative 17. That's where it's going to cross the y-axis. Now, that's all I'm saying here on this next page is that the slope-intercept form of an equation is when it's in the form solved for y. Whenever it's solved for y, the coefficient of x is your slope, and we call the other term the y-intercept, and typically we refer to the y-intercept with the letter b, just meaning that's where it's crossing the y-axis. Now, does it have to be in the form mx plus b? Could it be b plus mx? Could. You just have to recognize that whatever the coefficient of x is is your slope, and the constant is your y-intercept when the equation is solved for y. Now, using this format of y equals mx plus b to graph, no problem. You say, well, all, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use that b. That's telling us what the y-intercept is. So you plot that point. You know the y-intercept automatically. And if you tried to plug a x equals 0 into the equation, it's just going to cancel this mx term out anyway. And so you'd have, oh, well, OK, when x is 0, y is going to be b. That's telling you that the y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, b. You plot that point. Now you're going to obtain a second point using the slope. So you're going to have to write m as a fraction. Whether or not it is a fraction, any number can be made out to be a fraction. For example, if m is 3, you can say, well, I could call that 3 over 1. How do you find your second point from that? Well, you'd say I need to go up 3 over 1 because slope is the change in the vertical over the change in the horizontal. So you're going to start with the y-intercept find another point using your slope. And then once you have those two points, you connect those two points, any two points determines a distinct line. So you're wasting your time if you plot more and more and more points. As soon as you get two points, connect them. And then remember to draw arrows at the end of your line showing that that line continues on and on forever. Okay, for example here, if I ask you, I wanna graph 3 fifths x plus one, you say, this is an easy problem. Yeah. Yeah, of course it is. All graphing linear functions are easy. You say, well, all right, I'll start off with a y-intercept of one. Ding, ding, no problem. Then you say, well, what's the next step? You use that slope to find the second point. I already know it means in order to find the next point, I'll start here and I'll have to go up three and I'll move to the right five. Hypothetically, what if that was a negative three? Well, then I'd go down three. What if I had a negative five here? I'd go left five. In this case, both are positive, so that means up three and to the right five. That's what I did right here. So I started with the y-intercept. I went up three. I ran over five, or I went to the right five. And so once you do that, you can say, well, all right, it was at x equals zero. Now it's going to be five units to the right of that. So it's at, uh, at it, oh, sorry. Uh, Ooh, I think my point here is wrong. Should be the ordered pair. Ah, ooh, oh, ignore that four or five, guys. Boo, boo, John. Oh, that makes me mad. Uh, that ordered pair there, it's five to the right. The X component is five. And then the Y component is up three from one. The Y component is four. So just imagine that point is the reverse. It's not four or five, it's five, four. So you find your second point, which in this case is the ordered pair five, four. And then once you do that, you connect your points. And again, that point is five, four. And you can see I have it plotted right, even though I have it written wrong right there. 
So the ordered pair is five, four, and then you connect your line between those two points, gorgeousness. Now, a horizontal line is given by the equation of the format. So if the x value cancels out, well, it's because the slope is zero. And if the slope is zero, you just have a flat line because that line is not increasing or decreasing. So you'd say, well, all right, if it's not increasing or decreasing, it's constant. Any constant line is horizontal. So the y is always going to be equal to some specific value. Uh, and if it's a vertical line, it's because the slope was undefined. So if x is equal to a, you say, well, there's no y values there. That's because y value can be anything it wants to be. The x value is always some number of a. So if whatever number that, that a is and the y can be anything it wants to be, you're gonna have a vertical line at that value of x equals a. And re please remember in that case, the slope is undefined. Now, if I graph a horizontal line, if I just say, hey, guys, graph y equals three, then you can say, all right, I go up to y equals three. This is the ordered pair, zero, three. And you say, well, of course it has a y-intercept of three. But now, no matter where you go for x, the y value is always three. So you can say, well, it has a y-intercept of three, but it also has a y value of three at any other value of x. So it's going to be y equals three all the way to the right y equals three all the way to the left. I have my horizontal line drawn in at that point. Now, if I look at uh, the general equation of a line, and you'll remember back in the objectives, I said the general equation is just when you put a zero on one side and all of your variables and constants are on the other. Okay, so the general form is ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. If I give you that general format of an equation, and I ask you for the slope and the uh, intercept of it, or the, and the y-intercept of it, it just makes sense to go ahead and solve for y. It's kind of hard to tell what the slope and the y-intercept is just by looking at the general form. So you'll see down here in the solution, that's precisely what I did, is I got it in slope-intercept form uh, by solving for y. So I need to get the 6y by itself, I add 12 and I subtract 3x on both sides. So I get 6y is equal to negative 3x plus 12. Then what do I do? I divide by 6 on both sides. When I divide by 6 on the left, I just get y. When I divide by 6 on the right, I get negative 3x over 6, which reduces down to negative 1 over 2x, plus 12 over 6, which reduces down to 2. In this form, when it's solved for y, you know the constant is your y-intercept. So you can say b is equal to 2, or the y-intercept is 2. And your slope is just negative 1 half. You could put the negative out front, or you could have it in the numerator or denominator uh, for that slope. The m is equal to negative 1 over 2. Now, what if I would like to uh, graph out an equation that's in general form? without directly finding its slope and its y-intercept. You could always, always just do like I did in the last problem and solve for y and find the slope and intercept. But in this case, it's wanting you to try something different. Uh, and the reason it's wanting you to try something different is because anytime you're trying to find the x-intercept of any equation, whether it's linear, quadratic, cubic, or whatever it is, the only thing you ever have to do, you know it's crossing the x-axis when y is zero. So in order to solve for the x-intercept, we're just going to let x, sorry, y equals zero and then solve for x. We can then plot those x-intercepts on the x-axis. Similarly, if I say, well, I want to find the y-intercept and there should only ever be one of them, then you can just say, well, all right, then what you're going to do is you're going to let x equals zero because you know if it's crossing the y-axis, it's because the x value is zero at that point. We let x equal zero, solve for y. And then once you get your two points, you'll just connect them. I say with a straight edge, I, I typically don't use a straight edge. I just connect them as best as I, as I can. But a straight edge is preferable if you have one like a ruler or something. Uh, and then we'll connect those dots and remember to draw arrows on the end of our line. For example here, Here's an equation in general form, 3x minus 2y minus 6 is equal to 0. So if I say, well, I want you to find the x-intercept, uh, then you can say, well, the x-intercept of this linear equation is going to occur when y is 0. So I go into my formula, I substitute a 0 in for y. 
That just cancels out that term. And I'll have 3x minus 6 is equal to 0 on the right-hand side. That means 3x is going to equal 6. Divide by 3, x is going to equal 2. So now I know the x-intercept will be 2. Uh, and since it's a linear function, it's going to be the only x-intercept. Uh, I, I already know my x-intercept is going to be the ordered pair to 0. And again, remember, that's why we entered a 0 in for y. Is you know when it crosses the x-axis, the y value is 0. Similarly, we can find the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh, when I do that, I can say, well, all right, if I'm setting x equal to 0, I'll have 3 times 0 minus 2y minus 6 is equal to 0. So I have the first term cancels out, 0 minus 2y minus 6 is equal to 0. I add the 6 to both sides. I get negative 2y is 6. I divide by negative 2. 6 divided by negative 2 gives me y equals negative 3. And then I can say, all right, then my y-intercept is at negative 3. And the ordered pair for that would be 0, negative 3. So you'll see I plot out the y-intercept, 0, negative 3. My x-intercept was the ordered pair, 2, 0. We connect those two points. You've got your line. Pretty straightforward stuff there. Now, as far as application problems, I kind of like this one. Uh, you, you hear a lot about uh, how carbons are increasing, or carbon emissions are increasing the average temperature of the, on the Earth. Uh, here's a problem that kind of looks at that. It says, using the data points uh, 317,57.04 comma 57.04 and 354,57.64 comma 57.64, to obtain a linear function that models the average global temperature, f of x, for an atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration of x parts per million. Round m to three decimal places and b to one decimal place. So if you'll just notice in the two points, it's looking like this region had 317 uh, parts per million carbon dioxide in the air. This region had 354 uh, parts or carb uh, uh, parts per million of carbon dioxide in the air. I'll say it right eventually. Now it looks like as that carbon dioxide went up, you know, it's it's going up a little bit. The corresponding temperature went up. 0.6 of a degree on average. So it went from 57.04 average temperature to 57.64 average temperature. If we're just trying to use those two data points to model some um, information from it, and uh, honestly, you would want way, way, way more than two data, point, data points in order to come up with any formula, but we'll just use these two since we're finding a linear equation. Uh, we'd say, well, it'd be pretty easy to find the slope. You'd just say it's going to be the change in the temperature, y2 minus y1. I can see that the temperature increased by 0.6 of a degree when I say 57.64 minus 57.04. And that was over a span of time whenever, or not time, but over a span where the carbon dioxide concentration in the air increased from 317 to 354. So we say x2 minus x1, 354 minus 317. That's showing us that the temperature increased by 0.6 of a degree when the carbon dioxide increased by 37 parts per million. Okay, so what that gives us a slope of, when I take my 0.6 divided by 37, the three decimal places, 0.016. Well, what this is leading you to understand, or hopefully understand, is that we could use these two points to, as a prediction and saying, well, then if the pattern continues based upon these two data points, we would expect the temperature to increase by 0.016 degrees every time the carbon dioxide level increases by one part per million. Okay, now, if I try to determine a linear function for that, We'll get y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Please remember that point slope formula. It's going to come in handy so much because anytime you have a point, which we did have a point, remember we had two points. I just chose the first one here for my formula. 
So my Y1 is the 57.04, my X1 is the 317. I said Y minus, oh, or actually notice, I chose the other point. Does it matter whether you choose the first point or the second point? Nope, doesn't matter. Uh, it's pointless to, to, to worry about which one you choose. <laughs> pointless. Uh, so I chose the second point here. So I said, all right, then my Y minus 57.64 is going to equal M, which this is my slope, times X minus X1, which is gonna be X minus 354. That's what you see here on the next page. I chose the second point to use in that equation. Uh, so Y minus Y1 is equal to M times X minus X1. Again, where either point can satisfy that. Then you can say, well, all right, now I just need to simplify. What did I do? I distributed the 0 0.016 on the right-hand side, keeping everything to three decimal places. And then I said, all right, I need to solve for Y, so I'll add 57.64. When I said negative 5.664 plus 57.64, I got the 51.976. So now this is my equation in slope intercept form. But now going back to the problem, it asked me to round m to three decimal places and the y-intercept b to one decimal place. So that's what I've done here. 51.976 is for the y-intercept is gonna round to be 52. And so then I can say, well, then my linear model is 0 0.016x uh, plus 52, rounded even, models the average global temperature F of X for an atmospheric carbon dioxide of X parts per million. So if somebody wanted to estimate what the temperature is at any specific level of carbon dioxide and parts per million in the air, we could plug it into this formula and tell them. Uh, notice F of zero, if you'd assume no carbon dioxide in the air at all, which probably not even possible, but if it were, you would still assume that the average temperature would be 52. And as that carbon dioxide is going to increase, our temperature will increase by 0.016 of a degree per part per million carbon dioxide increase. That's a cool problem, guys. Uh, please do try the problems in this section and let me know if you need any help. Uh, please remember, I've worked all the problems myself out of the book, and your My Math Lab assignment should mirror those assignments very, very closely.